Aww, on today's episode of Anime Afterthought, welcome to Demon School Rumacoon, Season 2, Episode 18, My Desire. Yo, you have no clue how ready I am for this episode. I mean, yes, last week I faltered, but this week I was steadfast, and it's been difficult, especially coming off last week's cliffhanger, my god. When the combination Magical Beast was about to unleash its all-out devastating attack, completely wiping out a stadium full of demons, the most unlikeliest of heroes takes the stage. Yes, Ronove Arumier. Utilize Using his bloodline ability charisma to pull the beast's attention. But it looks like our would-be hero gave no further thought to what to do next. So who will save the heroes when they're in trouble? Iruma, of course. As we end out last week's episode with Iruma jumping in, looking like he's about to go full-on demon mode. And would you really have it any other way? So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. Yo, seeing this expression on his face was fucking priceless. Like, you could tell he did not think past just getting its attention. This is quite the pickle we're finding ourselves in. I'm not 100% sure which way to go on this. Does he go full on Ifrit mode and just attack it? I mean, it is the gluttonous feeder ring, so I guess he could absorb it? I mean, we've seen it do the other students when he first got it, and he does take a heaping helping from Sullivan, but is, is all mana kind of like a generic power source? Can it absorb it? I mean, he did just call forth Ollie, so I'm not 100% sure where he's going with this. Okay, so he is going Ifrit mode. Oh, but he wants him to gobble it up. Yeah, so he's gonna try to absorb it. How am I supposed to take that much? Oh, oh maybe there's a limit to how much he can actually absorb? Yeah, it makes sense, I mean, Gluttony is a fucking sin. You figured his uh, pit would be bottomless, but maybe there really is a limit. Maybe there's a limit to its its current form. Remember, he's already evolved once he got to, what is it, Gimel? And I'm pretty sure that was the last time he unleashed Ifrit Road, right? When saving, saving everyone during the festival. Oh my god, Kamehame. Dude, honestly, this is a nice fucking reference right there. That is so badass. So, magic is 100% mental. Going full on transformation, at least, I think that's what he means. Imagining something that could gobble up all of this mana in one go. Yeah, envisioning all his friends and the amazing time he's had so far, like, Plus, given his personality, what what's he gonna transform Ollie into? Oh, it's got teeth. It's got claws. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, uh, you know what? Did I expect anything else other than that? It's too fucking cute. <laughs> Oh, are you kidding me? Dude, straight fucking devoured his ass, my god. Yo, I wonder if the six fingers have noticed. Like, do they say have like some kind of s connection with their mana still, or? Wow, what a fucking cute climax. Like, seriously, summoning a giant three-eyed cat? <laughs> Thanks for the meal. Wow, oh my god. Piccaro and Romier are like, like BFFs now. Yeah, this is a life that he's been living up until the netherworld. Like, I mean, he was really out of touch with reality, thinking that was the fucking norm. Ow, even though he finally realized and got in touch with his emotions that have been long since gone, he still decided to jump into the fray. Like, this is a little badass. Oh yeah, there's future Amory and Aruma's child in the background. They're still uh, blurring out their face. It's behind a pigtail right now. Yeah, there's still a mystery behind why Sullivan chose Iruma. Now, a lot of people are saying that maybe Dracula went to the human world and had a child. Like, that's that's an interesting idea. I guess mission success. Wow. So does he, he rank higher than the other ones? You know what? He is like the right-hand man of Ball. And I'm pretty sure Ball's gonna be behind this shit. And just as I said, that Thunder Lord Ball are you surprised? Are you fucking surprised? It's not even the fact that you're demons. You're fucking criminals. Betrayal is the name of the game. And of course this motherfucker's gonna get off on it. Five bucks, five bucks. Oh, here we go, fucking monologue. Yep, yep, fucking creepy. 
I fucking knew it. You know what? Go ahead and buy yourself a, a chicken sandwich on me. I fucking knew it. You know, given the polar opposite in personalities compared to Iruma, they're really setting this dude up to be like a like a hardcore rival. Jesus Christ, there's two of them. <laughs> oh my god. It's literally just an older version of him with a fucking mustache. Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, you're all happy now when it was your asses on the line, but where were you when the little kids needed fucking help in? I mean, I get it, you're demons, it's not part of your nature, but still. Oh, shit. He's still in the park? And they're having a fucking parade? Wait, the prison's in fucking shambles and they're fucking cell- I don't- I don't- I don't like that. Ah, uh, speak of the devil. Ah, once again, it goes back to that, going back to the old ways. Walter Park was there to help alleviate the evil cycles, the stresses of, you know, demonic instincts. Taking that away, oh shit. Does that mean the Devi Idols are fucking on, on his hit list? They also help with the alleviate the fucking, the evil cycles. Could Karomu, could Karomu, could her life be on the line? Mortal enemies. Oh, they really are. They really are gearing him up to be a fucking rival. Oh, I guess no confrontation. Oh, make sure you have lots of fun with everyone today. Yeah, you can definitely tell that this is going to have a lot of impact going forward. Like, the shit he went through, the realizations that he had, this is definitely going to be sticking with him. What are they, buddies? Yo, what the fuck? He has the chibi head with a normal body? That's that's kind of fucking terrifying. Oh, shit. They covered their trail. Oh, I, dude, there's got to be some kind of system unless they hacked it. Will they not even know that Kirio broke out? Yo, you're playing with fucking fire. You're playing with fucking fire. You seriously going to tease him? Wait, aren't they supposed to be rationing in the netherworld? I'm pretty sure one of those demons said they're having like some kind of food shortage. Of course, he was chowing down on a bucket of fucking fried chicken, or at least, at least I hope it's just chicken. <laughs> you know, it's only a matter of time before Clara did something fucking hilarious. Hilarious or cute, you know something's gonna fucking happen. What, no seconds? Oh my God, is he standing on a step stool? They literally have him standing on a fucking box. I will say this one thing for sure, especially given this season, we're seeing a hell of a lot of romantic proclamations being thrown around. I mean, Clara has made it clear she wouldn't mind hooking up with Iruma. Amari has marriage and children on the brain, and now this? Oh, he finally has an answer for her. I'm not gonna lie, the dude definitely has, that definitely has progressed. I'm loving his character development. Oh, blushies. <gasps> Yo, is she asking him out on a date? Just bring the fucking step stool. <laughs> bring the fucking step stool. And then it pops up. Dude, perfect fucking timing, you two. Yo, she's wearing that dress. What? What? Why are you embarrassed? It was your fucking idea. Oh shit, news travels fast. Oh, Grandpa, what are you doing? No, that is not good. How do you expect him to fly below the radar if you're doing shit like this? <laughs> oh, poor Aruma. Must be rough. No shit, man, this is your fault. Yo, he's setting him up to be the, the next Demon King. 100%. 100%. All the shit he's doing. Announcing to everyone that he's the hero of Walter Park. Like, nah, this is... There's gotta be a deeper meaning to this shit. Oh, we're going to Clara's? This'll be fun. Ah, oh, fuck you. That was a good fucking episode, my god. Like, it was a perfect combination between action, suspense, comedy, drama, yes, even romance. Not gonna lie, I was a little upset we didn't get any kind of conflict between the Six Fingers and the Misfits, especially when it comes to Kiryo Senpai and Iruma, but they are setting stuff up for the future. They are definitely painting Kiryo as Iruma's arch antagonist. But I gotta say, even without that, this episode was amazing. First and foremost, 
foremost, asked and answered. I wondered going into this episode how Iruma was gonna take on the combination magical beast. I mean, was his plan to fight fire with fire, go in there and unleash a full-on Pandora mode Libera? I mean, it would be pretty serendipitous given the fact that this was actually the move that stopped Kirio Senpai in season one, which inevitably got him sent to prison in the first place. But then I got to wondering, the ring's capabilities really haven't been tested yet. We know it can consume mana. We saw it when Iruma first acquired the ring, when it started sucking out his classmate's essence. Not to mention, it needs to be regularly refilled by Sullivan. But then I got to wondering, I mean, these magical beasts are basically a giant mana bomb. They're gonna unleash a giant mana attack. Can't the gluttonous feeder ring just consume said mana? Surprise, surprise, it can. Of course, there seems to be some limitation. I'm assuming at its current level, there's a finite amount of mana that it can actually consume and hold, which when that's the main cusp of your plan is definitely something you can't overlook. Luckily for Iruma, Ali was up to the task and he was able to consume a majority of the magical beast mana. And let's just say their combination magical attack was fucking amazing. I mean, the Kamehameha wave pose alone was fucking gold, but then you throw away this transformed Ali into a giant three-eyed fucking cat that literally just ate the motherfucker. Like that was hilarious. That was fucking amazing. But like I said, even though he saved the day, when it came down to it, the six fingers were still successful. Their main mission was to break Kirio out of prison. And like I said, they were successful. Speaking of people being successful, let's talk about Omri. Now, her romantic intentions are progressing nicely, almost as equally to Iruma's development. She was able to confess, albeit to herself, that she does like Iruma. But I gotta say, taking this opportunity when Iruma was by himself to ask him out on a date, that's a huge leap forward. I mean, at this point, Clara is literally playing second fiddle. Like, she has a lot of shit to catch up on, especially coming off the fact that she admits she wouldn't mind ending up in marrying Iruma. But yeah, taking this opportunity to set up a possible date in the future, that has me excited. That has me excited. Last but not least, on the topic of the future, what the fuck is Sullivan planning when it comes to Iruma? Like, I like to think that he is just a doting grandfather that idolizes his grandson so much he can't help but to, to gloat. But given this giant mystery behind the missing Demon King, the prophecies that fit Iruma to a T, hell, even Alec Red, it does make someone wonder, is there more to the story? Did Durkilla go to the human world and have a secret love child? Which could be a very interesting narrative route to take, but I kind of like keeping it simple. Why not just Sullivan choosing Iruma for being the kind-natured soul he is, of course, recognizing that that's what the netherworld needs. So while he did choose him for love, there's just more to it. I don't know, it's episodes like these where it really gets your gears turning, man. Like I said, I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. They are focusing on a lot of character development. We see the misfits are starting to, to break free and become truly individuals. And I love how in doing that, you get to see their interactions with other people, especially when it comes to, to Caligo. That was fucking hilarious when Jazz lied, Gomon and Kamui were just fucking around in his room. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you guys are getting a little too familiar with Sensei. I mean, you saw what he did to the Mountain Bull. Hell, and I'm not even gonna lie, I like how they're expanding tertiary characters like Ronove. So yeah, I'm definitely picking up what you guys are putting down. Season two has been amazing when it comes to expanding the characteristics and developing the misfits. And hopefully this is a trend that continues. What makes a series truly great and the world feel full is not only focusing on an establishing character characters, but also introducing them without letting the other ones fall to the wayside. Hopefully we'll continue this going forward into season three. Fingers crossed we get an official announcement, not to mention something about an English adaptation of the manga. Like, come on, man, come on. Anyways, with all that being said and more Irumakun next week, I honestly cannot wait for future episodes.